Hi, welcome back for another video. My name is Tanya, for those of you that are new here, and I'm a watercolor and acrylic artist. So today I'm gonna to be painting a watercolor dragonfly on a daisy for you. So I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so to get started, we've got our Arches watercolor paper. I've got some paint brushes here. I'll let you know what size I'm using as I'm going along. I've got my pencil, my watercolors, my water, and my paper towel. All right, so to get started, we're just gonna take our pencil and we're gonna lightly sketch out a daisy. And I'm gonna have mine kind of coming up from the um, corner here, so it's pointed more on an angle, and then I'm gonna have my little dragonfly sitting on it. All right, so I'm gonna just do the circle where the seeds are, and then I'm gonna come around, and I'm just gonna be doing some petals, just very generic petals, little ovals, little teardrops coming off from the center. You could do as many as you want, I'm not gonna have him going around too much up on top because I want this to be the part where he's sitting. And then I'm just gonna do a little stem. I'm just gonna eyeball it from the center of where the seeds are and just bring it down. So that's gonna be where my stem is. If you wanna do some other little petals peeking out, you totally can. I'm not gonna make mine too full because I want more of the focus to be the dragonfly. So I left all this room up here. I'm just gonna be doing kind of where the middle of his body is gonna be. Uh, let's just do it like right here because I want some of his wing to be overlapping the flower. So this is going to be where the middle of his uh, body is going to be, where the wings come from. And then I kind of looked at an image of a dragonfly online, and he's got all these little segmented parts. So his little tail comes down like this, but it's all like little circles. They're all little segments. You do as many as you want. I'm gonna just turn my paper on an angle like this so it's easier for me to make the wings. Now the wings I saw come off more of this top segmented part here. And some of my wings are gonna be bleeding off the side, which is fine. I like that look. If you don't like that look, what you could do is just make your dragonfly smaller. And then he's got the other wing that kind of comes off this one. Now this top wing seems like it's a little bit longer than the bottom one, so if you have more room up here, make the top wing a little bit longer. So I'm gonna make it a little bit longer down here. Come around, and then I'm gonna put the second one. And actually my second one needs to be a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase some of that. Now I do want, the dragonfly's um, wings are see-through. They're transparent. So you can kind of see some of the flower underneath this. So I'm not gonna erase all my flower under here. I'm just gonna overlap the dragonfly's wing on top of my flower. And then he's got two little eyes. And it looked like another little part that came off him here. All right, so, and then he's got some little legs coming down. And then he had a couple little legs coming up. But we can pencil those in or pen uh, with pen um, later, so don't worry about that. All right, so that's about all we've got going on right now. So we've got our little flower and our little dragonfly. All right, so I am gonna pick up my size. Uh, actually, I'm gonna put my background first because I do want a little bit of a background. I'm gonna pick up a size 12. And I'm gonna take a little bit of my, my sap green. I'm gonna make a little bit of a wash on my palette here. And I'm just gonna go around my flower and around my dragonfly. And then I'm probably going to put a little bit of my uh, Windsor green blue, just to give it a little bit of some different color greens in there. And if you wanna leave a little bit of your white paper showing through, just to give it a little bit more um, de definition, you can do that as well. So just go around all your flower petals. And if you hear that noise in the background, if you've seen my videos before, I have several dogs and they're usually always right by me so you will hear them playing and chewing their bone all right so i've got my sap green and my windsor green blue and you can go ahead and wet your paper first if you want to or you could just do it um, wet on dry and then bring in a little bit of water later and just kind of blend it in so there's two different ways you could do this so that was the wet on dry and it's easier to move around if you have the wet, wet on dry. But if you want a little bit more of an unpredictable look, I'll show you. You can wet your page first. So I'm just putting water and then go in with your paint. And then just drop in your paint anywhere you want it. And it's just a little bit more um, unpredictable because it just kind of follows the water. So it just depends on what look you like. 
I'm gonna add a little bit more of that Windsor Green Blue. Now, since our daisy has white petals, it is nicer when you have a, um, a background color because it'll just show the petals off a little bit more versus white petals on white paper. Um, but if you did wanna do white petals on white paper, you would just take a little Payne's gray or blue or whatever color you want, and you would just kind of shadow some of these um, petals a little bit. And I'm gonna do that anyway, so I'm gonna show you how that looks. I'm gonna go right on my wing here, because I did say um, that the wings are transparent, so you will see a little bit of this underlayment under there. And then actually, I'm gonna just do a little bit on the wings here too, because you're gonna see a little bit of that coming through. just like that. So I'm gonna pick up my size four, and my my uh, paper is still wet here, so it might bleed a little bit, but if you don't want it to bleed, just um, dry it or wait for it to dry. I'm gonna go over a little bit with my Cad Yellow, and again, it's wet on dry. And I'm gonna just fill in parts of my flower here. I'm gonna take a little bit of my um, orange, it's, a, it's called like a cad pale red, but it's more of an orangey color. And I'm gonna let those mesh together. So I did the yellow more on the top and the orange more on the bottom. So it's a little bit more of a shadowed color because the orange is a little bit darker than the yellow. So I'm gonna let that dry, go all the way down to where your petals are. All right, wash off your brush. I'm gonna take a little bit of my Payne's Gray and I'm gonna show you um, a little bit of the shading. So you don't have to trace all your petals because that just wouldn't look right, but you can you can go over a little bit here, maybe on some of the edges of your petals, kind of where you think the shadow would be. Leave some of your white, obviously, because they're white petals. Some of your petals could be a little bit darker than others. You can always go ahead, if you think that you um, put a little bit too much Payne's Gray down, you can always take your paper towel and blot it like this, especially when the paint is nice and wet still, you can get some of that off. You'll never get the white of the paper back. Um, that's just the way watercolor works, but you will be able to lighten it up a little bit. Okay, so if you think that's too dark, you can add a little bit more water or pick it up with your paper towel. So if your paper, if your background was still white, you'd be able to see the petals like this anyways because you're adding a little definition there. But if you wanna go ahead and pick up that paint and lighten it up, I suggest you doing it before it dries completely, like that. So this is just Payne's Gray. So just kind of think maybe where your shadows would be and then you could just darken those up a little bit. Kind of more towards the middle here where the flower goes, the petals go in towards the center, might be shadowed a little bit more. Maybe on the outside of the petal, the very tip might be shadowed a little bit more. Um, definitely if you have little petals peeking through, those would be shadowed a little bit more because they're underneath. I've got a little bit of my orange bleeding through here, and that's fine. I, I like that. If you don't like that, then just pick it up with your paper towel, and it should take it off. And I'm just going to darken up the middle part right here like that. And it's actually bleeding into my orange, too. I don't mind that. But if you do, just wait till that center is dry before you do this part. And I'm going to darken up a little bit of the ones underneath, the little petals that are peeking out. Okay. Let me pick up a little bit of that with my paper towel, a little too dark in some areas. Totally fine. All right. I'm going to let that dry, and I'm going to go on to my dragonfly now. All right, so since his wings are translucent, you're gonna be able to see through them. So that's why we did a little bit of the background coming through and a little bit of the flower coming through. But now we're gonna lay our wings right on there. I'm gonna start with this one because my flower is still wet. 
Pick any color you want. I think I'm gonna go for more of the blues and the pinks. So I'm gonna pick up my um, Windsor Blue Green and I'm just gonna lay down, not everywhere, maybe more towards the middle where it touches his body and maybe more on the outside of the wings. And I'm gonna do the um, second wing a little bit different. So you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and dry because I do wanna do both blue wings at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry my flower really quick. Okay, so my flower is pretty dry. So I'm just gonna go over it with that blue again that we just had done on the top. And I'm gonna go over that top wing. Now where you have the yellow, it's gonna start showing up as green. I don't mind that, blue and yellow make green. I'm gonna start filling it in right here. And I'm gonna bring in just some water and blend it in. If you wanna put a little bit more blue. Again, I'm trying to leave the middle of the wing a little bit lighter. I'm gonna go over this one again. Bring it in. If you think there's too much of a stark of a line there, too much um, uh, contrast, just blend it a little bit with some water. Okay, I'm gonna add a little more blue on this one. And that one, I guess. All right, now this wing's a lot fatter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start bringing some of that blue down. And you can always change the shape of your petal, or not petal, your uh, wing as you're going around doing this. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and start doing my bottom wing. I'm gonna pick up my opera pink, and I'm still using my size four. Again, you can use any color you want. My blue is still wet, so where the blue and the pink are gonna touch, it's gonna make purple, see? Because they're still wet. Gonna go over that with a little bit of water, blend it out. Okay. Same thing on this one. It's gonna start making purple where the blue and the pink touch. And it's gonna look a little bit more orangey where the um, pink and the yellow and orange are, are um, touching. See how that's a little bit more orange right there? All right. Okay, perfect. All right, I am going to start putting in, since this is wet, you can go ahead and dry it and put another layer, but I'm just gonna let it dry naturally. And I'm gonna go back to my flower here. I'm gonna take a little bit of my darker green, which is green blue, but you can use any green you want. I'm gonna put in my stem. I'm gonna use a little bit of my sap green, tone it down a little bit. And then if you wanna put other little stems coming in every which way you can, it just makes it look a little bit more realistic. Just make sure your background is dry or it's all gonna start bleeding together. So I'm gonna put in another little stem coming down this way like that, and then we'll add some little leaves and stuff to it in a minute. And then just to break up the painting a little bit, I'm gonna bring down a stem. So wherever you think it's kind of bleeding through or just kind of going through, just eyeball it through your flower and poke it out on the other side. All right, and then I'm gonna do a couple little stems coming out. Now daisies have not really nice, elegant um, leaves. They're just kind of, um, I wanna say more like jaggedy little leaves. So you could just pounce your brush like this. And I'll add a little yellow in there. And I might add a little bit of um, darker green later. I'm not sure yet. But just play around with it till it looks nice to you because they have these kind of like little, they're like rougher leaves, a little bit rougher. Not as elegant as like a tulip or something. So it's got the little stem. and then the yellow. I'm gonna let that dry, and then I'll see if I have to go in over it again. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Let's say I want another little stem peeking out, or another little leaf peeking out over here. So I'm just pouncing my brush. If you want it underneath your dragonfly, you could do that too. I'm gonna bring in a little of that yellow again. I like that limeier green, but if you don't like that limeier green, just don't add the yellow. 
And let's see, maybe one down here. And I'll add a little yellow. Okay. And I think that's about it for now. So I'm just going to let that dry, see how it dries, and then maybe I'll add a little bit more later. All right. I am going to go start his little body now. But the only thing is my, my wings didn't dry as fast as I thought they would. So I'm going to go ahead and dry those, and then we'll start his body. Okay, so my painting is pretty dry. There's still a couple little wet spots here and there, but I'm not gonna go and work on those areas. I'm gonna start his little body. So I'm gonna pick up my size four again, and I want his body to be a little bit darker. So maybe I'm gonna use some blues and Payne's grays and maybe like a darker green. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll show you what I'm doing here. I've got my little palette. So I'm gonna just wet my Payne's gray, make a little puddle. And I've already got a little puddle of my green, but I'm going to darken that up a little bit more. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and lay down a little bit of that green color, that green blue. And I'm going to do it mostly in the middle of his little body here. I'm just going to put a little bit going down those little segmented areas. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of my blue to that. I'm going to add a little bit more up here. And now I'm going to add a little bit of that Payne's Gray to it. Just a little bit here and there, just to give it a little definition. I'm going to let that bleed in nicely. And maybe a little bit more up here too. Let those two little sections here connect. There. All right. Super, super pretty. All right. I am going to work on the petals a little bit more as that dries. I'm going to take my paint gray again, and I'm just going to add another little layer here just to kind of give these petals a little bit more um, shadow. Mm -hmm. And my puppies are fighting over a bone right now. So that's what you're hearing. We adopted two puppies in December. And uh, so they're not even a year old yet. And they're playing. All right. I'm going to put a little bit more of that Payne's Gray under the wing, almost like as if the wing is making a shadow on the petal. And again, if you want to pick up some of this with your paper towel, as it's still wet, you could definitely do that. If you don't want that much, you know, if that you don't want that much paint on there. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start adding more definition to the wings. So I'm going to pick up that blue again, but this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch my brush to a zero. And I'll pick up that blue again. I'm just going to kind of outline, but not really outline, just kind of add a little bit to the edges here. And I'm going to bring it in just like that. Look how pretty. So that kind of pushes the wing in a little bit more towards the body, and it leaves the, um, the end of the wing here a little bit more translucent. I'll do the same thing to this one. Very pretty. And I'm going to do the same thing to the pink. Now again, my blue is still wet, so they're probably going to make purple once they touch, which is fine. I don't know how much of this video I can edit out because he is just complaining over there. <laughs> he really wants that bone and she has it. 
their brother and sister. Super, super cute. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit more pink because as these colors blended, some of my pink kind of disappeared on me. So see how we wanted to still do the flower underneath because his wings are translucent. You wanna still be able to see everything that's going on under there. All right, and then for his little eyes, I'm gonna take a little bit of my Payne's Gray, or you could take black if you've got black, whatever you want. He's got two little eyes like this. And we might go over this with some pen later anyways. My, archi my archival ink pen. And then he's got a little like mouth thing, little face right here. And it all just bled together, but that's okay. I will pick up a little bit of that with my paper towel. All right, and then the wings, you can either do the wings, or not the wings, the legs, you could do that with a, um, a nice long brush. I've got my size one, it's my liner brush, um, and it's called a liner brush because it's got this nice long um, bristle here, and it holds a lot of paint and a lot of water. Um, so let's just go ahead and do this with our Payne's Gray, I'll show you how it works. But um, you could always do it with a pen later too if you want. All right, so you're just gonna put it down and it just holds a lot of paint and a lot of water. So you can get a nice long line, a consistent line. Like that, without it being too broken up. Now it just bled a little bit into the body there, which is totally fine. I'm not, I'm not bothered by that, but if you are, then you just wanna dry your dry the the, um, the body a little bit. Or you could just pick that up with your paper towel, but I don't want to. And I'm gonna add a little bit more to his eyes here, just because they had bled in with the little face and I want the eyes to stick out a little bit. Super, super cute. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more down here. Now I'm gonna switch, since I'm not making a long line, I'm gonna switch back to my regular brush, my zero. And I'm just going to add a little bit more Payne's Gray down here. Because again, I wanted him to be the focus, not the flower. So I want him to just pop off the page a little bit more. All right, so I had lost a little bit of that yellow right in here of the flower. So I'm going to add a little bit more. A little bit more of the orange peeking through. And you can even put a little bit through his wing here a little bit since you do see through it. All right, uh, I think I'm gonna give a little bit more definition to his wing, but I'm gonna dry it really quick. Okay, so his wings are nice and dry, and I am just gonna pick up my liner brush once again, and I'm gonna take the, the blue. You can take any color you want, but I'm gonna take the blue, and I'm gonna start putting some little details in here. Because if you look at a dragonfly's wings, there's like this little pattern going on. So again, using my liner brush, look how pretty that is. Just a nice, long, even line. I recommend going to get a liner brush if you do a lot of line work like that. So two little lines. I'm gonna do the same thing to the bottom of the blue wing over here. And then I'm gonna start putting some little lines in there. Uh, they've got all these little broken up little lines. You could do any pattern you want. I'm just gonna do a nice, just a thin, light little, um, a little bit of uh, paint, not a lot. I don't want it to be too dark because again, the wing is nice and translucent. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. I'm gonna flip my little, flip my little dragonfly around. It's easier to um, flip it around than try and have your brush kind of go up. At least I find it's easier just to flip your painting around. Again, I'm gonna make those two little lines, nice long lines coming this way. And then I'm gonna make some little lines, diagonal little lines coming down. Just really light line work. Just delicate, delicate line work. You want it there, but you don't really wanna see it too much. I'm gonna do the same thing with the pink on the pink one. Let's grab some pink, got my liner brush. I'm gonna go around my wing and I'm gonna just make some delicate little diagonal lines like that. Do the same thing to the other side.
And then I think I'm gonna add a little pink up here because I lost a little of that definition up there on top. And then again, I'm gonna make my little lines. He is turning out so cute. All right, I think what I wanna do is put a little bit of pink on his body as well. So I'm gonna pick up my size zero again. And I'm just gonna put a little pink coming down his body. And there was already blue there, so it's probably gonna look more um, purpley. But I just want a little something, just to pop it off just a little bit. Pop it off the page. There. If you wanna go in and put a couple more like little leaves, you can. You can darken up some of your, um, your um, stems here. Actually, maybe that's what I'll do. I'll put a little bit of blue on my stems. Let's see how that looks. So again, I have my liner brush and I'm just gonna pop in a little bit of blue just to pop those stems out a little bit. Maybe a little bit on the flower stem there. And then if you want, you can always go ahead and put a little bit of definition in the um, the leaves as well. I still have my liner brush and I'm just putting in some little veining. That's all I'm doing, just some little veining. Like that. If you want another flower, um, like peeking through over here, you totally can. I think I'm just gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna dry this and then I'm gonna add a little bit of my archival ink. Okay, so I've got my Micron size three um, archival ink pen. And if you want, you could just go over parts of your painting, maybe just like a little bit of broken up line here and there, just to kind of pop your painting a little bit more. If you don't wanna do this and it kind of scares you, don't worry about it. I'm just gonna show you what it looks like. I'm just going over very lightly some of the wing. just to pop that line work out a little bit more. If you don't want to do that, you don't have to. All right, and then if you want, you could just always go over his body a little bit, maybe some of those segmented areas. Crispen them up a little bit if you want to. All right, maybe his little eyes, his little... Oh, you know what? And actually, I forgot to do, he's got like little feet type things coming off his. So just the ends here of the legs, he has like these little pads, just like that. Okay, and I might do a little bit of my flower too. Just a broken up line, maybe between the petals. All right, so for finishing touches, I've got this um, glitter paint. And I'm gonna put a little bit of glitter on his wings just to give it a little bit of a shimmer. If you don't have this, don't worry about it. You can use glitter glue, you can use really whatever you want. Stir it up a little bit. And it's just a see-through glitter. So I'm just gonna add a little bit here and there just to give it a little bit of a sheen. I don't even know if you can see that on camera, but it's really, really pretty. Just a little sparkle. Really, really pretty. Maybe a little bit going down his body too. Perfect. Wash off your brush really good because you don't want any of that glitter to be on your brush. Actually, if you had a generic brush, you should probably use that instead of one of your good ones. I just didn't have one of those on hand, so I washed off my brush really well. All right, so there he is. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you liked it and learned a little something. And if you did like it, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you want more videos like this one. And you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Have a great day. Bye.